The late night sky on Tuesday had stargazers in North America seeing red. What people were looking at was a moonlight spectacle, often referred to as a blood moon. Over the next year and a half, though, North America will get to see four consecutive complete lunar eclipses. Tuesday's eclipse kicked off the rare phenomenon called a tetrad. Skywatchers can catch the next lunar eclipse in October of this year and two more in April and September 2015. You know, as you're very well aware of all the prophecies, you know, about signs in the heavens and the sun turning to darkness and the moon to blood. And so as I was looking at this, uh, I went to NASA's website because they have 5,000 years of eclipses recorded. Mm -hmm. Because God created everything mathematically, they can do this. Right. Well, I noticed that there were four total blood moons or total lunar eclipses in a row in uh, 2014 and 2015. They fell on Passover and the Feast of Tabernacles in 2014, and then again on Passover and Tabernacles in 2015. I was blown away to see these four blood moons falling on the feast days, and I wondered how often does that happen? And I noticed it didn't happen at all in the 1800s, the 1700s, the 1600s. And so I went to the 1900s, and lo and behold, twice there were four blood moons in a row and guess what years they fell? This is what we talked about, 1967 yes. and 68 when Israel captured Jerusalem. And then right after Israel became a nation in 1948, they happened in 1949 and 1950. And so I thought this is uh, an awesome sign. I mean, in Genesis 1.14, God said he created the sun, the moon, and the stars to send sign. Typically, you only have one total lunar eclipse every few years. But to have four together in two years tied to the biblical holidays, that's huge.
500 years. In 500 years. And this is confirmed by NASA. This is not something that a religious think tank put together. This is something that you can check on the internet. This is what NASA says has happened, and this is what they say is going to happen. Well, it's 1917. It's the end of the First World War. Given to the Jews. God said he would sign to the sun to accompany all the things he's doing. The four lunar and solar eclipses, and they all fall on Jewish feast days to show the world he's got everything under control. Once more, God said, put signs in the sun to accompany all the things he's doing. The four lunar and solar eclipses. Moons um, have occurred in 19, uh, 1493 94, fall of Spain, the Jews expelled um, from them, and Columbus discovers America, what the Bible calls us the infant nation. Right. N 1949 to 1950 follows Israel being declared a nation. State. And then a, a nation state. And then 1967, 68, the Six Day War. That's, those are the last three times yes. that a four blood moons have occurred. Right. <laughs> He's coming back. There's gonna be the mother of all wars, but he's coming back. He's coming back. Oh, he's coming back. There's gonna be the mother of all wars, but he's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. Passover. The second blood moon next year will be October the 8th on the Feast of Tabernacles. And then in 2015, it will happen again on Passover. And then it will happen the last time, September the 15th, and that will be on the Feast of Tabernacles. The, the irony of what it takes to get the sun, the earth, and the moon in a perfect alignment to have a blood moon and then for those blood moons to be on this exact date is something that just is uh, beyond coincidental. Uh, the Bible very clearly says, Joel the second chapter says, the day of the Lord will be as when the sun refuses to shine. And the significant thing is that between these four blood moons will be a total solar eclipse and the moon will be turned to blood. That is exactly repeated in Acts, the second chapter. It is repeated by Jesus Christ in the book of Luke, the 21st chapter, when he said, you will see the sun, signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And when you see these signs, lift up your head, your redemption draweth nigh. So you're saying that this next four blood moons that's starting next spring, is this the end times, what we're looking for, or do, do you not know what 
is being communicated with this. Technically, prophetically, the end times began with the feast of, with the uh, outpouring of Pentecost 2,000 years ago. Uh, so we have been in the end times when you believe the dispensation, dispensational seven-day period of time that equate, equates to the seven days of generation. There are seven ages and dispensations. We have been in the end times a long time. But when we are reaching that point in time when world history is about to change, we are entering that zone, and it's going to change forever, it's going to change dramatically, and it's going to involve Israel. But is, there any, is there any way to predict actually what's going to happen, and will it happen after the last four blood movements would be in 2015? There is a sequence of prophetic events that the Bible says will happen, but it does not give a win. It just says when you see these signs like this, mm -hmm. Re, you, re, lift up your heads and rejoice, your redemption draweth nigh, meaning that the end of this age is coming and the messianic age is going to appear. How long is that? No one knows. But I have researched this backwards and forwards, and the concept that these four blood moons happen on a high holiday four times in a row with a solar eclipse in the middle is beyond the null hypothesis of probability. This is something that the Bible, using the sun, the moon, and the stars as a communication system to humanity, says something is about to change and world history is going to change forever.